Okay, so it's Friday, October third, second. Uh, I'm sorry, and um, just want to kind of bring you up to date where we are. Um, we left off. We had just finished the fillets, and uh, since then, what we've done is we've actually glued on the extension tube. So you can see the booster extension. Extension. Uh, we glued that on uh, with the coupler. And we let that dry. Uh, if you look, I'll show you in just a second, you can see the uh, bulkhead with the stainless steel uh, loop U-bolt uh, for the main chute. Uh, once we put this on, we let it dry. It's, it was glued twice. It was glued first to the bulkhead. We let that dry. Then we put glue on the bulkhead and pushed it up and got glue on the other side. And we got a good bond on both sides. That's set up for a day. Once that was done, um, we then mixed up um, some of the West adhesive uh, with the fillet powder. Pretty much the same consistency we had been doing for the fillets for the fins. We put a thick coating on this and really built it up. And then we sanded it. So we've spent a lot of time sanding this. It's pretty much smooth to the touch. Uh, you can't even really feel the transition at all. Um, so we've gone ahead and started getting ready to do the fiberglass for the fins. So we put our Teflon tape. Uh, we're basically going to do a 3 ounce roll once around that's 32 inches to here. In other words, it'll go over this seam and make this seamless. But before we do that, we're going to do a tip to tip. So we're going to take our time, unlike last time, and do a side, let it dry. So we'll do a three ounce pull across the booster, both sides of the fins, from the base all the way to this point here, which is about an inch of the leading edge of the fins. So we'll feather all that in, smooth it out. Uh, so we'll do each side one time. We'll put a Teflon release on top of it, let it fully dry, and we'll do all three before we pull the Teflon. Like before, I put my end caps on with Teflon tape. That way there's no wicking of the adhesive inside the tube, so the tube should stay dry. We'll get a little bit of overage, which we'll grind off of the end. We wrap Teflon tape here because we're going to cut the fiberglass to this point. Obviously, adhesive will wick over. Uh, once it's dry, the idea is we'd be able to pull this tape off, trim it up a little bit, but we should make a nice hard edge. And then we would do the three ounce wrap here with two Teflon wraps on this. That way, we pull it tight uh, and get it really conforming to this tube pretty tight, like we did for the payload. Uh, and we'll basically make this look like one piece. So hopefully there won't be too much of a seam here between the fiberglass tip to tip versus the tube. But even so, we've learned from this, you know, if we could make this transition so smooth, we'll mix up some West with the fillet, put a big uh, amount, build up a certain amount, let it dry, and then sand it down. It should make it pretty seamless. So. Um, it's not going to be, you know, we'll be painting this, so aesthetically we don't care what it looks like as long as you can't fill it. So as I mentioned, this is the extender tube. Uh, you can see inside where we've got the coupler, we glued it. We actually put the bulkhead on the bottom side of the coupler, so the idea is if the chute pulled, it would be pulling against the coupler. But you can see down in there we got quite a bit of the uh, air epoxy on both sides. So it's uh, glued in pretty good. So you can see here the entire cavity that the main chute, well actually this is the drogue chute, um, in the case of dual deployment, uh, main and single deployment. But there's plenty of space in there and we still got the hole and the bulkhead. It goes all the way down, I don't know if I can pick that up, but all the way down to the, um, the engine tube. So in the engine injection charge, gases will actually come through that hole and pressurize the bulkhead. 
and we were basically sitting from the camera's perspective where the payload section would be uh, and the eBay and so this is the separation point once this part of the tube is, is pressurized. So we're going to cut the uh, fiberglass and uh, get that ready and I'm not going to bore you with the details of that because you've seen that before uh, so we'll just do some quick update shots to show you where we are with the fiberglass and uh, with any luck this weekend we'll have the booster completely finished relative to the three ounce fiberglass. Okay so we've cut the uh, Teflon um, and the three ounce mesh for three sections for tip to tip and you can see I've actually trimmed up uh, the number one section with roughly about a half inch excess to go on this point. Um, <clears throat> something we've done doing for the first time uh, these are the holes that are drilled and tapped with the insert uh, two locations where the rail guides go so I read or well, saw on YouTube where people had cut around these and you know complained that it created a lot of problems. Uh, one writer suggests that he plugs his, fills it with Vaseline, uh, which I did, and then as an added bonus I put some Teflon tape in there. So if everything works well we're going to just basically go over with a continuous um, mesh, an adhesive, let it dry, and then we'll actually cut through this. And With any luck that plug should just come out, it should uh, be resistant to any adhesive getting down in there. So. Hopefully that works. I went ahead and did this one. Not that we'll be covering this with fiberglass today, but later on when we do the um, rest of the tube, it's already plugged and taken care of. So, um, not going to bore you with the details of doing this, watching me do this. So, I'll just give you periodic updates as I finish different sections. So, next video I should be done with section one. Okay, today is uh, Tuesday, October 6th, and we finished the uh, fiberglass, and you can see where we've done every side. Basically, this time we did one side, let it dry for 24 hours. The side one was done on uh, Friday, and then on Saturday we did side two, side three on Sunday, and we let a full 48 hours to dry. So we'll start removing the Teflon film. So we took the Teflon uh, release off and you can see here the fiberglass came up pretty good. Um, you can see where it stops right here. So we still got to trim the edges. Um, the idea of putting the Vaseline with the Teflon in the hole and just running the fiberglass over the hole worked. Basically, I just got an exacto knife, cut through the fiberglass pretty easy. Pulled the Teflon tape out and was able to thread the screw right in. So, a few bubbles that will be filled in with the epoxy. You can see it came out pretty good. So, we'll clean up these edges with the grinder and then we'll be getting ready to run the 3 ounce around the rest of the tube, one continuous sheet which will then blend right over to the, over this uh, section of the tube here extension. You can't even fill it, so after all the sanding and filling, it's pretty smooth. So this will cover it really nicely. And other than having maybe a small seam here, we'll later sand this and fill this in, see if we can get this blended in pretty good. But I'm pretty happy the way it conformed to the fillets. There's no lifting off the fillets at all goes right to the edges. So I'll come back after we've uh, cleaned this up and show you the finished product. Okay, today's Thursday, October 8th and you can see I've cleaned up a lot of the excess um, fiberglass, trimmed it up. Um, so you can see how well it did. Um, you can see there's a lot of uh, fiberglass with some fillets. There's a 
big thickness there on the each of the fins. So I've cleaned up this whole area. I was able to get uh, the screw in to put the guide and you can see the line here where the three ounce stopped. So now we're going to prep the remainder of the tube and run one continuous and we'll actually I think we're going to overlap this line here about a half inch and then there'll be a little bump there but we'll sand that out rather than try to make a hard end and again like we did before we put some Teflon tape in the hole the other rail button so that should work pretty good and uh, I'll update you as we go along with that fiberglass Okay, we put the end cap on with the Teflon. Uh, we're overlay this about a half an inch, but again, like before when we did the initial tubes, the Teflon keeps the um, adhesive wicking on the inside of the tube and gives you a nice cut. Again, I didn't do any masking on this end because I'm going to go ahead and overlay the fiberglass about a half inch. So I'll start um, actually on this line. So I'm going to offset from the original starting line here on the 6 ounce. So we're offset, we'll start the fiberglass here, and we'll start the Teflon. I think this time I'm going to only go one wrap of Teflon rather than two. The last time we did the tubes, I did two, but there were some air bubbles where it appeared that the two Teflon sheets had made it separated. So I got the one sheet of 3 ounce of fiberglass cut. Then the Teflon sheet got the adhesive mixed. So I'll update when we have all the uh, single wrap of three ounce and single wrap of Teflon on. Okay, it's uh, October 10th, and uh, we've let this set up for two days. The three ounce. So I still got the Teflon release on here. So I'll pull this off real quick. See how this looks. Buddies. Oh. I just had to show that. So cute. Alright. You can see how I kind of blended in with the overlay from the previous three ounce. I ran the adhesive kind of over the other section. A way to kind of blend it so when we sand it out. So here I'm pulling it away. You can see where the excess Teflon, I mean the adhesive wicked up through the Teflon. Pull it back and you see the excess adhesive falling off. Everything works right. We should have a nice smooth finish underneath. There's our Teflon plug for our rail guide. I cannot feel any difference between where the two tubes were bonded together, so that worked out really nice. You got a light bubble there. Have to fill that in. No big worries. So far, it looks pretty good. adhesive on it, it will level it out and you'll end up with a really smooth surface which looks like happened here. Have a little bit of a ridge here, you can kind of see where the adhesive is a little thick here. Um, but no bubbles, that can be sanded down. This is just some rare areas where the, the adhesive is pretty thick and the Teflon didn't come off so it ripped there. But there we go. Very smooth to the touch. Very nice. 
came over the side, well over to the side, so we'll trim that off. Don't read this. And we'll uh, sand it, but hardly, I can hardly feel any transition at all here. So we'll, uh, the rotary sander will blend that in. There's no distinct ridge or anything I touch. Definitely like the way this blended in. No, no seam or anything there. So we'll take the end caps off, trim that up, go over with the whole sander, blend this all in nicely. And this tube, other than putting the rail button and some holes in it, vent holes, would be technically ready for paint. So, until then, thank you. Bye, stay trekky. <laughs> so today's Sunday, October 11th, and uh, we got all the pieces together. We finished up uh, sanding the um, three ounce on the booster section. Uh, found a few high spots in it while the epoxy had uh, kind of gone to the bottom. You can see here where I've marked out another area where only by touch you can kind of feel a high spot. But you can see where the two layers of uh, three ounce from the tip to tip to the top section of the booster you can't even feel the transition. So all of it's been sanded, um, nice transition, uh, even where the booster extension was put on because we did a lot of filler and sanding before we put the 3 ounce, there's no detection at all that there's any transition there. Um, put the bottom uh, rail guide back in. We cut through the three ounce, cut pretty easily. Once we got to the surface, we were easily, we could easily thread the the screw in. Um, I went ahead and added a third rail button, so it's along the same line here. And uh, this is in the um, section where the drogue chute would be. So unlike these two, where we put a um, a all thread or not all thread but the big standoff and glued it to in this case we glued it to the bulkhead where the parachute connection is and this one is the uh, um, one for the um, uh, centering ring I'm sorry this is the top centering ring of the engine tube but if you remember, we glued it into the uh, top centering ring, and then the bottom one is on the second from the top centering ring. So those are pretty beefy, and we could use the full extension of the screw. This one, we had an insert, so we got to make the interior smooth, so we had to cut the sh screw short. Um, and we actually have the receiving end from the from the bottom cut up into the rail guide a little bit uh, to get as much thread surface area as we could. Um, I'll show you a sample of that. So what it is, I got, I got one of these, you get these from Lowe's. Um, I bend the, um, or actually cut off the little ears here and basically drill a hole and push this up through. So you can imagine some of this collar would be sticking above this surface so I drilled a clearance inside the rail guide so some of these threads can go up and then the idea is we flush uh, flush mount this into the tube so if you can see I separated the two tubes and So you can see how it's flush mounted here with epoxy. Um, so it shouldn't hang up on the chute at all. Again, down there you can see the retention and the bulkhead for the, um, for the parachute. Um, so the screw was cut short, so it will not penetrate through that point. 
Uh, but that's how we're securing uh, the rail guide. You can see it's on there. And I don't know if you can see in the video, but the screw tip end comes right at the end. So putting it back together, you can see it makes the three rail guides on so we get a lot of coverage on the rail all the way up to the payload section so you know a good two-thirds of the rocket will be attached to the rail um, and of course we'll have attachment all the way down to the bottom so should be no problem meeting the minimum speed for release on the, the rail so technically this other than some more sanding and getting rid of some high spots smoothing it out uh, technically this is ready for paint. We went ahead and when we sanded this we connected the payload section as well as the eBay and we sanded all this together and we got pretty much where it's smooth all the way across. We did a little bit of filler on the payload section. I had some um, gaps. We got a little more filler there but the transition between these is pretty smooth. We could um, Sand this out a little more. Got a few places here to fill in before we start painting. But we lined everything up after sanding. Put the screws in. Everything lines up. Uh, so it's pretty straight. Uh, you can see. And um, so the last thing I'm going to do is you can see down here where the JV weld is and where some of the overrun of some of the um, doing the tip to tip. We've gone in and grind a lot of this out. So what I'm going to do is put a fillet, same thing with the powder, the filler powder, and just let that float and not put a nice even level hard coating in there to finish that up. Um, so you can see from this side how the fillets, you can see actually where the wood's in the middle, you can see how much material we got on both sides. Um, so there's a lot, nice radius on all the fins, um, so a lot of material holding the fins together, um, so pretty sturdy. So other than doing this down here, we have a few vent holes to put in the rocket to keep the pressure the same. So the same, we got some vent holes we need to put in the two sections that carry the parachutes uh, mainly in this section here because this is the pressure fit um, when the rocket is going at very fast speeds high altitude in a short duration of time um, you can actually get a positive pressure in here which can cause premature separation here. So uh, we'll put a vent hole here to try to keep the outside and inside atmospheric pressure the same. These are not as much as a concern because they're bolted together, but we'll still put some vent holes here. So we'll put some vent holes here, even though these are screwed together, but just make sure the whole rocket stays the same equal pressure from outside in. So other than that, we put the uh, electronics in the altimeter bay. All the electronics haven't arrived yet. Um, so we have that ready to go. Um, but the rocket could fly as early as this weekend um, with single deployment, low altitude flights, which is the plan, weather permitting. And then we'll put the electronics in and start testing uh, the dual deployment. Okay, so until next time. Okay, it's Monday. Um, we did the fillet on the engine, on the bottom of the booster. You can see where it's very smooth, filled in all that roughness. Um, we went and cut three vent holes in each section to keep the pressure stabilized in all the different areas. Pretty small hole. Those red marks I put on here to circle some um, areas that need filler. So I'll fill those in. Then some uh, high spots 
that need sanding. So based on the weight distribution, the center of gravity is about 28 inches from the rear. So we updated the simulator. So structurally, the rocket is done, other than finishing it and getting it ready for paint. So in the next videos I'll show I'll be getting the parachutes ready, the electronics for the eBay, and going for the first launch.